and another video from Dave. What's up, YouTube? This is Dave's Hidden Up Point 7. This is another video to do with Outcast Season 1, Episode 6 from The Shadows It Watches. Huh. And another video from Dave. And yeah, um, pretty much this is my weekly Outcast uh, review. I didn't write this one down, so I'm basically just going to go over what happened with you know, each of the characters in the episode, so it's not particularly in order, um, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, it was a great episode, I really enjoyed it, and, uh, a lot of cool shit happened, um, pretty much with, uh, let's start with, uh, basically Kyle Barnes, uh, well, first off, let's start with what the episode was mainly about, the, the episode was mainly about Reverend Anderson, and basically, um, him, you know, basically coming, you know, coming to terms with basically all his exorcisms he's done for the last 10, 20 years or whatever, however long he's been doing them, were bullshit. <laughs> and he's basically having, you know, like a breakdown, because like last episode, in episode 5, Kyle basically told him, you know, he don't, after they did that, you know, exorcism on that, that girl that was missing, and she was basically a vegetable, he said he doesn't want nothing to do with this shit anymore, and basically told, you know, Reverend Anderson, you know, basically, you know, threw all his beliefs in his face, you know, basically called, you know, everything he was doing, you know, uh, basically mocking him in a way, you know, basically saying that, if God is real, why is he allowing this? That's basically what he said, along something along them lines. And uh, you could tell it really affected him. So in this episode, you see right from the get-go, you know, Reverend Anderson's watching all these old exorcisms that he did, that he taped. And he can tell in the exorcisms how it, you can see how, um, you know, the, the, the people that he's doing the exorcisms uh, on basically still, you know, have demons in them. You know, you don't. And nothing is happening like what happens when Kyle does an exorcism and that big, you know, thing comes out of their fucking mouth and it's floating around the room and they pick Kyle up and take him somewhere for a second. You know, none of that shit happened. So he knows every one of the exorcisms that he's been doing for bullshit. <laughs> so he's basically, you know, feels bad about himself and, you know, uh, basically having a nervous breakdown. So that's going on, and he has somebody in this episode, basically through the episode, uh, you know, locked in a room, and you hear all this shit going on. So the chick that, you know, basically likes him, she comes by, um, I forgot her name, what exactly her name is, but it's like the girl that basically, woman that basically goes to his services, she's like, you know, looks at him like a, like a boyfriend. And basically thinks that he's basically, you know, cheating on her or something like that. Has something else going on. And he actually lets her see what's going on. And she learns that, you know, there's some crazy shit going on here in this town. And uh, she knows that Reverend Anderson can't basically, you know, do this by himself. And she, you know, puts two and two together with what him and Kyle Barnes have been doing. And she goes and searches for Kyle and basically uh, tells uh, Kyle that the Reverend needs his help. Um, and basically this episode with Kyle, he's basically started a job on like a road crew doing the roads and basically wants nothing to do with Reverend Anderson or any, basically ignoring all this until the old woman comes for him. She basically, the the the, the old woman that Reverend Anderson uh, had did an exorcism on in the past, she basically comes for Kyle and hits him with uh, her walker. <laughs> and then when he wakes up, she's right there basically in his face taking this breath. So then after that goes on, you know, uh, he wakes up and you could tell he knows what happened, but he don't want to believe what happened. And then, um, you know, when he's working pretty much later on in the episode, he just decides to say, fuck it. And, you know, he feels that he has to basically, you know, take care of this. He knows they're coming for him, and he knows there's a problem in the town, and he can't ignore it anymore. 
But when he goes home or he, he's at his house, he sees uh, Sydney there. You know, and he's like, what the hell is this guy doing here? And Sydney basically is out in the yard, you know, doing stuff to, I believe, the guy that he killed's car. Well, inside the house is the old lady, and she's talking to Sydney and basically telling him, oh, I wasn't going to, you know, I wasn't going to take everything from him or whatever. And, and Sydney basically says to her, you know, you could have ruined all this. And I believe what Sydney did was took the uh, demon out of her because she's basically a vegetable uh, when, uh, when Kyle goes to confront her, you know, and she's just basically, he sees it in her eyes like his mother, and then they take her off. So Sydney obviously took the demon out of her because he felt she was like, you know, a risk to their plans. So basically, uh, you know, in the episode, Kyle and Reverend Anderson, they come to a, you know, come to terms, basically, Kyle says to him, he says, if we're going to do this, we're going to do shit my way. And you, you know, on Sundays, when you're here, that's you, <laughs> you know, you run the church, but when we do our shit, I'm in control. And uh, so basically what happens with all that at the end of the episode, you got uh, Sydney that shows up because he, you know, he said in one of the episodes before that he was going to take care of, you know, Reverend Anderson, you know, and, uh, you know, Kyle and everything like that. And basically, he's in Reverend Anderson's, I believe he's in his, in his church, I think that's where they were, and uh, he confronts Reverend Anderson, says, oh, you know who I was from the start when you first seen me, when you were basically doing your service uh, in the church, and when you stared at me, and he basically cuts a fucking pentagram into his fucking chest, and it's actually, when you watch the um, episode, the making of the episode, they actually say that's an exact... Uh, you know, duplicate of how, not exactly, but, you know, it's it's supposed to be exactly from the comics, and it's pretty good how they did it. Um, so that's basically what goes on with Kyle and uh, uh, Reverend Anderson. Now, with Megan Holter, we finally got to see what happened with, uh, with uh, Mark Holter when he actually beat up that guy from her past, and what we learn about that is basically that guy was leaving town. He decided to say fuck it and leave. And that's when Mark Holter pulled him over and beat him up on camera. Now he told uh, Megan Holter, he said, this basically can go two ways. I can just say I left, you know, I think he said something along the lines. He left from a bar or something, got into a fight, don't remember. Or he could just basically get a lawyer and say everything that happened. So we don't know exactly what he wants from her. But we did see uh, Megan Holter basically in her bed and she had her kid in there and told her husband when he came home, you know, I like her here. Basically telling him, go sleep on the couch. But he don't know what it's all about, that she knows what happened. So basically what I'm assuming is going to happen, this is just my predictions. I believe he's going to want to have, you know, probably intercourse with her or something like that. I don't know, you know, but he, he said it can, he said either way he's going to have fun whether he takes him to court or he gets what he wants from Megan or whatever, you know. That's what I'm assuming he wants from her uh, is to have sex again or something. I don't know. But he was going to leave the town, but then the uh, then her husband beat the hell out of him. So, that, you know, that happened in the one episode. So we did get to find out what happened on that. And the, other, the only other thing that I could think of that was important with Chief Giles... Uh, and uh, we seen in the episode Mark Holter was interviewing uh, or had questioning one of the woman that they found the fingernail. And she won't say what's going on or nothing, but she does confront that. I believe he's a firefighter or something that is the chief's um, friend from, you know, that, that he saw burning that uh, trailer in the woods. And she confronts him on his, I believe he's on his lawnmower. And she says, oh, she's like, they're, they're, you know, they're on to it. They questioned me today, blah, 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 blah. And you could tell he's pissed because he's like, oh, fuck. But there's, I believe his wife was looking out the window. And I believe with that whole thing, you know, uh, Chief Giles basically knows, you know, there's something go going on with this whole thing. And he's in on, you know, he's basically on, you know, he's going to see what the fuck's going on. But with the old lady, there's a picture in the house and you actually, I think the chief seen it, uh, I believe it was the chief, I could be wrong, but somebody seen a picture in the house of the old lady and uh, the guy that set the trailer on fire, which is Chief Giles' friend, you know, so they knew each other, the old lady, so he has, 
he may have something to do with all this, whether they were doing some ritual out there or he's a demon, who knows. Uh, but that was the episode. It was a really good episode. Um, I have to honestly say, uh, I would have to give this episode, if I gave it a score, I would say, uh, I actually really enjoyed it. I would I would go with a, 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 probably an, probably an 8 point, I think an 8.8 .8 will go with it for this one. It's almost, a, it was close to a 9, but I really enjoyed it. The show is getting really good. We still haven't figured out why they call him the outcast. There's a lot of unanswered questions. Um, but the, sh the one thing with the show still, it's very, very slow moving. Very slow moving. If you don't like a slow moving show, this probably, this probably isn't for you. But if you're into a show that you like, like car stuff and you, you can deal with the slow you know, it being a slow-moving show and it, like exorcisms and stuff, or something along. I, I think this would be something along the lines of Constantine, uh, or anything like I said to do with exorcisms. You'll like this show. It's 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 a creepy show, but it's very slow-moving. But it, it's I think it's doing a good job. I think Robert Kurtman, the creator of the show, and you know the comic. I think he does a really great job with this story. But that's my video, guys. Uh, not too late this week on my Outcast review. Um, I need to start trying to get them done, like, you know, the next day right after I see it, or try to do it right after I watch it, but it is what it is. But tell me what you think about Outcast uh, Season 1, Episode 5 in the comment section, or Episode 6, my bad, in the comment section, and more videos to come. Thank you, YouTube.